Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai. Hello, today I am going to talk about Fitzhugh Curtis Syndrome. First, I am going to discuss at length what the syndrome comprises, its pathophysiology and diagnosis and then I will show a video of an actual case with the syndrome. So stick on till the end. Those who want to see only the video can click on the hyperlink below in the show more box and go there directly. Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome is a complication of pelvic inflammatory disease named after two physicians Thomas Fitzhugh Jr. and Arthur Hale Curtis who first reported the condition in 1934 and 1930 respectively. Please note that it is named after two physicians and not three as everyone thinks. Although this extrapelvic manifestation is reported to be a rare complication of PID in the Western literature, it is seen very commonly in Indian patients. In our practice, we see it in greater than 30% of women with PID. The syndrome is thought to result from direct intraperitoneal spread of infection towards the perihepatic region from the initial pelvic inflammatory disease. It is usually caused by gonorrhea, acute gonococcal perihepatitis or chlamydia bacteria. Recent studies have shown that cases of Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome due to chlamydia trachomatis infection outnumber those due to Neisseria gonorrhea infection by almost 5 to 1. By and large, genital tuberculosis does not cause perihepatitis. Bacteroids and facultative organisms such as Gardnerella, E. coli and Streptococcus may also play a key role in some cases but are less commonly involved. The perihepatitis results in characteristic violin string adhesions between the Gleason's capsule of the liver and parietal peritoneum. As far as the clinical features go, the syndrome has two phases, acute phase and chronic phase. Features of acute phase include acute onset of right upper quadrant abdominal pain aggravated by breathing, coughing or laughing which may be referred to the right shoulder. This is usually associated with tenderness on palpation of the right upper abdomen and tenderness to percussion of the lower ribs which protect the liver. In the chronic phase, majority of the patients are asymptomatic or they may present with persistent dull ache in the right upper quadrant. A diagnostic perihepatic rub may be heard in the right subcostal region. Auscultating at the right anterior subcostal margin may reveal a finding characteristically described as walking in new snow type of crunching friction rub. Surprisingly, there is often no or only minimal pelvic pain, vaginal discharge or cervical motion tenderness which may lead to the diagnosis being missed. In every patient found to have evidence of pelvic inflammatory disease on laparoscopy done for infertility, pelvic inflammatory disease or chronic pelvic pain, the laparoscope must be directed towards the right hypochondriac region to look for perihepatitis. Presence of violin string adhesions is diagnostic of the syndrome. Diagnosis may be confirmed by presence of Neisseria gonorrhea or Chlamydia trachomatis in the fluid from the peritoneal cavity, although this is not necessary. Here is a diagnostic laparoscopy done for a 29 years old patient with primary infertility. You can see thickened 
white patches on the tubal and uterine serosa. The fallopian tubes appear thickened. Findings suggestive of pelvic inflammatory disease. On turning the scope towards the liver, one can see the characteristic violin string adhesions. Treatment of symptomatic patient with such a syndrome involves a course of antibiotics to cover the appropriate organisms, typically ceftriaxone and azithromycin. Laparoscopic lysis of adhesions may be performed for refractory pain. However, relief of symptoms with lysis of adhesions is of questionable benefit. For further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology, refer to following books written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers Clinical Cases in Gynecology Questions and Answers and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery If you have found this video useful and informative, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking here.